Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Guys of Magic. This is Hunter and Steven. Say what up, Steven. What up, Steven? We are back. This time, we are going to be taking a look at Mishra's Burnished Banner, the upgrade version. You took us through the $100 list last time with David. This time, we're going to be taking a look at what you did with $300. So first things first, before we get started, if you guys haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Why are you, why are you waiting? Hit it. Subscribe. And also, like the video if you did like the video. But let's jump straight into it. First things first, Steven, talk to us. What's the face commander for this deck? Yep, so I went ahead and just kept the face commander uh, as Mishra, eminent one. Two colorless, a blue, a black, and a red. Legendary creature, human artificer, 5-4. States at the beginning of your combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of target non-creature artifact you control. Except its name is Mishra Warform, and it's a 4-4 construct artifact creature in addition to its other types. It gains haste until end of turn, and then you sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step. So basically what the deck wants to do is make copies of artifacts. That sounds awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty amazing. Um, to be honest with you, it's a really cool ability. And with the $100 upgrade that I did, I was able to make it to where we don't really have to sacrifice any of those creature tokens that we're making. All right, well, let's just jump straight into the additions. What did you add here to make the deck better? All right, Hunter, before we do jump in, let's go ahead and pop up on the screen real quick everything that I am keeping from the 100, and it is everything. Uh, I was really happy with the way the $100 upgrade performed uh, and the direction of the 300. I basically kept it the same. Uh, I still have the combo in here. Uh, basically, what I wanted to do with the 300 is just add some more utility and some cool cards that can kind of help us win a little bit faster, hopefully. Okay, so just got to tune it a little better from the 100, make it really hum. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and speaking of tuning, let's go ahead and jump into these two creatures that I put in here. Uh, I've added Goblin Engineer. It is a colorless and a red for a creature Goblin Artificer. It's a 1 2. Whenever Goblin Engineer enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an artifact card. Put it into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. It has a other ability where you can pay a red, tap it, sacrifice an artifact, return target artifact card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Really cool ability here. Kind of ties in to Goblin Welder. This is a red for a creature Goblin Artificer. It's a 1-1. One, one. You can tap it, choose target artifact the player controls, and target artifact card in that player's graveyard. If both targets are still legal, as this ability resolves, that player simultaneously sacrifices the artifact and returns the artifact card to the battlefield. So really cool cards. Uh, they go really well together. Uh, you can basically sacrifice an artifact you have on your field, whether it's a token copy of something you don't really need to use anymore, like one of the four fours we're making with Mishra, or even any of the other tokens that are artifacts that we're creating from the 100 letter list. You can basically just recycle and just get a whole bunch of fun stuff. Lots of ETB effect artifacts that we have, drawing cards, creating creatures. Th th this deck is just so fun. I really like Goblin Welder there. It'll swip, swip swap. Swippy swappy. Swippity swappity. And then Goblin Engineer as well. It's returning the Artartic Artifact. A lot of the other cards in the deck already do the same thing, which is awesome. Yep, and I mean, the best part about it too is it's basically a tutor for two. I mean, it, it, how can you really go wrong there? <laughs> True. Well, what else are the other artifacts you're throwing in the deck since this is an artifact deck? These were pretty much the only two creatures. I went ahead and added a couple more artifacts into the deck because we are an artifact heavy deck. Uh, I will say I took the signets out. I went ahead and just put the talismans in there. So I added Talisman of Dominance, two colorless. It can tap for a colorless and you can also tap it for a blue or a black and it deals one damage to you. I also added Talisman of Indulgence. It is two colorless as well taps for a colorless or you can tap it for a red or a black does one damage to you as well uh, also going with some more ramp i added chromatic ori it is seven generic uh, you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color always a good caveat there you can tap it to add five colorless mana which is amazing and then you can pay five tap it draw a card for each color among permanents you control uh, I really like the Chromatic Ori in here just because if we're making four or four copies of this card, they come in with haste. So, I mean, just if we make one copy, that's 10 colorless mana right off the rip. So I, I really did love this addition in here. 
Also, for some utility, I added a cloud key. Uh, cloud key is three colorless. As cloud key enters the battlefield, choose artifact, creature, enchantment, instant, or sorcery. Spells you cast are the chosen type. Cost one less to cast. Uh, I don't really know why I didn't throw this in on the $100 list, especially since there is so much value here. Uh, if we make token copies of this and we make at least three, that is three generic. We're paying less for whatever we like. Uh, this was, when I kind of thought about it a little bit further, this was definitely a card that I had to bring in here. This was amazing. Also added a Welding Jar. It is zero. You can sacrifice Welding Jar, regenerate target artifact. So I really do like this just because if people are trying to target our stuff, destroy our artifacts, you know, if we're able to make many copies of Welding Jar with Mishra or with any of the other cards in the deck, we are able to just regenerate those target artifacts and just laugh at the face of the opponent. And then the last card I added was a Thunderhawk Gunship. It is six colorless and it is a artifact vehicle. It has flying. When Thunderhawk Gunship enters the battlefield, you create two 2-2 two, two white Astartes Warrior creature tokens with vigilance. Whenever Thunderhawk Gunship attacks, attacking creatures you control gain flying until end of turn. Uh, it has a crew two and it is a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, pretty solid here. So you only have to crew with two power, which is pretty amazing for a 6-6 six, six regardless. And then when it ETBs, it's creating you two, two, two creatures. Uh, if we make a copy of this with Mishra, we're just going to ramp out of our minds with creatures. It's going to be nuts. Yeah, like all these artifacts, talismans, they do really good with ramp, copying those to give extra mana. That's amazing. Uh, Cloud Key and Welding Jar, also very great to add to the deck. Really cool that you can get a 4-4 four, four for zero mana, essentially, with Welding Jar. Yeah, that's another reason why I love it the most. And uh, Thunderhawk Gunship, dude. You're going to be making a ton of little Astarte warrior creatures by copying that gunship and swinging in for six or four. Yeah, and not only are we swinging four. in for six with the... We, I mean, well, we will be swinging in with the gunship, but the reason why we'll be swinging in with the gunship is because then everything we have has flying. So we're going to be swinging in with all these artifacts that are just flying and just beating up people. It's great. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Well, this being a artifact heavy deck, I see that you might have added a couple of enchantments to go along with it. What are we adding here? Well, going with the you know token creation uh, theme a little bit with this kind of set now, uh, I went ahead and added mechanized production. It is two colorless and two blue. It is an enchantment aura. It states, enchant artifact you control. At the beginning of your upkeep, create a token that's a copy of enchanted artifact. Then if you control eight or more artifacts, with the same name as one another, you win the game. So this card was really fun to look at and put in this deck because I kind of thought about it a little bit. There are artifact lands in this deck, Hunter. So we can just throw this on one of our artifact lands and every upkeep, we're basically ramping. Yeah, that seems very good. That is a very good alternate win condition. Yeah. I mean, you. I mean, you're basically putting your opponents on an eight-turn clock. I mean, it, it's pretty. I, I mean, I, I do love this card and the fact that the artifact lands in this deck are going to be a possible second win condition. I never thought I'd win with lands if I wasn't playing a gate deck. <laughs> but it does put a giant target on your back, so be careful with this card because uh, nothing would make that, me happier. If something, if somebody sees this come in, and you target a land you control, you are target number one to kill as quickly as possible. <laughs> Listen, or at least I'm, have enchantment removal. I mean, this is true. But, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, the reason why I do like this card is, like, even if somebody does enchantment removal, hopefully they're doing it on, like, the second or third time, hoping that, you know, they're like, okay, well, we have eight turns. We can kind of do some other stuff until then. And by then, you've already ramped three, four, possibly even five lands. Oh, you for know? sure. And that's, and that's not even to say that we're putting this on a land. We could put this on anything, really. I mean, we could put this on Thunderhawk Gunship, and we can make a ton of, you know, Asardi's Warrior Creature Tokens. I mean, there's <laughs> so many options with this card, and that's why I really liked it. Yeah, it seems pretty good flexibility there. Mm -hmm. And speaking of flexibility, I always have flexibility in my budget when it comes to a $300 upgrade to throw in Ristic Study. It is two colorless and a blue. It is an enchantment. And then whenever an opponent casts a spell... You may draw a card unless that player pays one. It is probably my favorite question in Magic. Uh, I want to get it on my license plate. Uh, pay the one? Pay the one. 
Can't go wrong with Rhystic Study as being the best draw spell in Magic. 100%. All right, well, I like those. Uh, looks like you've changed a bit of the land production here. What are we changing as far as the mana base? Yep, so with the mana, uh, the mana that comes in the deck uh, is pretty solid, but at the same time, I think with $300 upgrades, the deck become more fluid when you add better lands. I went ahead and added Bloodstained Mire. It is tap, pay one life, sacrifice Bloodstained Mire, search your library for a swamp or mountain card, put that onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. I also added Blood Crypt. Uh, you can shock it in for two life. Uh, Steam Vents, same thing, shock it in for two life. And then Watery Grave, shock it in for two life. Uh, but the piece de resistance is definitely Urza Saga. Uh, Urza Saga is an enchantment land. Uh, it has three chapters. Chapter one, Urza Saga gains tap, add a colorless. Chapter two, Urza Saga gains pay two, tap, create a zero, zero colorless construct artifact creature token. With this creature, gets plus one, plus one for each artifact you control. Spoiler alert, we're going to have a lot of artifacts on the field. Chapter three. Search your library for an artifact card with mana cost zero or one. Put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Uh, so in this deck, there's a bunch of cards uh, that we could possibly get with this. Um, I really do love Urza Saga just for the fact that you can just kind of grab either a soul ring. Now, obviously, you see this in like higher tier play and you're grabbing like a mana crypt or mox opals and stuff like that. Here, we're looking for a soul ring. Or to be honest with you, I really love the fact that this can go search for a welding jar. Uh, I know Welding Jar only costs like a dollar, but at the same time, to be able to sacrifice it and regenerate a target artifact that somebody's trying to get rid of in a deck like this, I feel like is super important. So I definitely like this addition. Can't go wrong with Shocks and Fetches. And I also like how you slipped in an Urza Saga into a Mishra deck. Sacrifice Two Brothers. The brothers War. The brother's war. Uh, but yeah, that seems good. Is that the additions for the day? Yeah, those are the additions. I kept it short and sweet. I, like I said, uh, you know, I know a lot of people weren't terribly thrilled with a $100, like, infinite combo deck. We're taking the feedback, and I'm going to kind of reel it back a little bit, but the deck did perform really well the way that it was built with the $100, and I think just adding these few cards kind of makes it kind of steamroll a little bit more, if I'm honest with you. I think this is going to be more fluid and just like just take over the game before you know it. Gotcha. All right, so let's move on to the removals. What are we removing to make room for all your new cool stuff? Yep, and before we get into what I removed this time, Hunter, just on the screen right now, guys, you'll go ahead and see all the cards that I removed last time. Uh, these were cards I didn't really feel like kind of made the deck fluid for what I wanted to do. And then, yeah. Now, let's go ahead and get into the unfortunate part of getting rid of more of the stuff. Uh, so I did get rid of Farid, Enterprising Salvager. It is two colorless and a red. It is, whenever a non-token artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create a colorless artifact token named Scrap. It also has, you can pay one, a red. You can sacrifice an artifact and choose one. Put a plus one, plus one counter on Frad. It gains menace until end of turn. Go to target creature, or discard a card, and then draw a card. Uh, this card's cool. Uh, it's a 3-3 three, three for 3, which is always solid. You're creating a token, I guess. I, I just The fact that you know it has to be a non-token artifact is kind of silly, especially when we're making token artifacts. Uh, so I went ahead and just pitched this. I mean, you know, put, goading target creatures isn't really what we want to do. Filtering through the deck with a discard and then draw is really fun. The plus one, plus one, and Menace. Like, I'm not trying to go voltron with this, so I just pitched it. Traxos, Scourge of Krug. Four colorless, that is Trample. Traxos, Scourge of Krug, enters the battlefield tapped and doesn't untap during your untap step. Whenever you cast a Historic spell, untap Traxos. So Historic spells are artifacts, legendaries, and sagas. Uh, it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. That's sweet for four it comes in tap, but obviously, you, you know, in an artifact-heavy deck, you know, we can untap this pretty easy. Uh, I just, I wanted to kind of keep this deck semi-low to the ground, uh, creature-wise, uh, and also try to artifact-wise. There are some heavy spells, and I kind of wanted to concentrate on just those few rather than just have, like, a bunch of four or five costs. There is still uh, that, that potential of a whiff, too, so this might just be tapped for a while. Be super unlucky. 
Yeah, I mean, you're completely right, Hunter. I mean, we could possibly whiff. And, you know, as David says, whiffing is bad. Whiffing is bad. Uh, but going along with the theme of getting rid of high-cost creatures, I also got rid of Scavenge Brawler. It is six colorless. It has Flying, Vigilance, Trample, and Lifelink. It has five. Exile Scavenge Brawler from your graveyard. Choose target creature. Put four plus one plus one counters, a Flying counter, a Vigilance counter, a Trample counter, and a Lifelink counter on that creature. Activate only as a sorcery. Okay, cool. We have a six cost four four. It has a ton of text on it. It flies. It doesn't tap. It can go over things. It can gain you life. And then it dies. And then you got to pay another five. And then you can make another creature do it. I'm already making four fours. I don't I don't need this in the deck. So I pitched it. And then also a really big beater that I got rid of was Hellkite Igniter. Five color, listen to red. It is flying. Haste. Pay one and a red. Hellkite Igniter gets plus X plus zero until end of turn, where X is the number of artifacts you control. This one was a toughie to get rid of, I'm not going to lie to you. Really, the only reason why I did get rid of it was because it was a seven cost. Uh, in this deck, there's tons of things we can be doing with seven mana. I get it that at the end of the day, this has haste, so we could possibly swing in for lethal on somebody, depending on our board state. But at the end of the day, I just felt like if I could do something else that was better for what this deck wants to do, I went ahead and just threw it out. Yeah. I mean, for 7 mana for a 5-5 five, five that you have to pay into it to get it bigger, I see why you took it out. Yep. What are the other things that you've taken out besides creatures? Yep, so like I stated earlier, I went ahead and got rid of the Signet, so I got rid of the Mirror Signet. Uh, two colorless, you can pay one, tap it, add a blue and a black. I also got rid of the Racto Signet. It is two colorless, you can pay one, tap it, add a black and a red. Like I said, the Talismans were way better, uh, so I went ahead and just threw those in there just for ease of life and happiness uh card that i was kind of didn't really want to get rid of but at the same time i feel like with the way the deck is it didn't really make much sense to keep it in there was trading post it's four colorless you can pay one tap it discard a card you gain four life pay one tap it pay one life create a zero one white goat creature token pay one tap it sacrifice a creature return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand and you can pay one tap it sacrifice an artifact draw a card uh, there was really one piece of relevant text on this card that made any sense to me, and it was Sacrifice a Creature, Return Target Artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. We have lands in the deck that I added from the 100, and that come stock in the deck that do this, and I don't have to have an artifact on the field. So I think this was kind of like an easy one to get rid of. Uh, it's cool, but at the same time, I, I feel like the deck does it better than having this out, especially for four mana, paying it, and tapping it. And then the last two cards I got rid of, uh, I got rid of Oni Colt Anvil. It is a black and a red. Whenever one or more artifacts you control leave the battlefield during your turn, create a 1-1 colorless contract artifact creature token. This ability triggers once each turn. Tap it, sacrifice an artifact. Oni Colt Anvil deals one damage to each opponent. You gain one life. Uh, really cool. I like it. I like it in the standard meta. I like it in the deck. I like what it does. I hate that it triggers only once each turn. Uh, once I read that, I put this right in the bin. This is a very good card in standard. Great card in standard. Because you usually don't have to worry about two other people. But here we are. <laughs> and then last card I got rid of was Mnemonic Sphere. It is a colorless and a blue. Uh, you can also pay a colorless and a blue. Sacrifice it. Draw two cards. And then you can channel it for a blue, discard it, draw a card. This one was a toughie to get rid of, I'm not going to lie to you. The, this one came, this came down to like the, the very end. I think I had like 101 cards in the deck, and I was like, what do I do here? Because uh, to, to be honest with you, this is a really good card. Just to pay two, sacrifice to draw two cards, and then we have ways to recur it. Is, ugh, this one hurt, but I, I just kind of had to make room. That's really the only reason. All right, so those are the artifacts that you've replaced. What about the lands? We've added some. What are we taking out? Yep, so unfortunately I did have to get rid of some lands. Uh, I went ahead and saw that there were three lands in the deck that said Temple of, and I got rid of all of them. Uh, Temple of Malice, Temple of Epiphany, and Temple of Deceit. Uh, Temple of Malice taps for a black and a red. It comes in tapped. You can scry. Cool. Get out of my deck. 
Temple of Epiphany does the same thing, but for a blue and a red. And then Temple of Deceit does the same thing for a black and a blue. Uh, get out of my deck. No. Uh, I got rid of Path of Ancestry. Uh, it comes in the battlefield tapped. You can add one man of any color of your commander's color identity. When that mana is spent to cast a creature spell that shares a creature type with your commander, scry one. There's not too many artificers after the deck got kind of cut, so I found this deck kind of irrelevant, especially when it comes in the battlefield tapped. Uh, one card that I did cut that hurt me more than I can possibly let you know, because I do feel like it's one of the best cards in Magic, I went ahead and got rid of Myriad Landscape. It enters the battlefield tapped, and you can tap it for a colorless, and then it has another ability where you can pay two, tap it, sack it, and then search for your library for up to two basic land cards that share a land type, put them on the battlefield tap, and then you shuffle. Uh, I just love the way this card kind of ramps. I, I think the reason why I like it so much is I played my very first commander deck, and I had a turn one soul ring. I played this with Myriad Landscape, and I just got... I, I ramped so hard, it just made me really happy. <laughs> the old nostalgia then, land. Dude, it's... <sighs> I hate it because it's like, you know, obviously it comes in every pre-con, but I, I think it's a solid card. I mean, you're getting two basics for one. I guess there's way better cards that do that, but nostalgia, you said it. And then the last card I got rid of, just a swamp. I always get rid of swamps. I will. I am the kind of commander player that will get rid of extra lands in the deck and go down to like 33, 34 lands and be ballsy. I feel you. Just so I can get cooler cards, you know what I mean, man? I know what you mean, man. Yeah, but that's, uh, that's it, man. That's what I did. That's what you did. So, like always, we always ask. We gave you $300. What was the total value of the additions to this deck? Well, you gave me $300, and I spent that. And I reached into my wallet... And I grabbed seven more dollars and eighty-seven cents, because my total was three hundred and seven dollars and eighty-seven cents. I'll give it to you. That's close enough. Do I get reimbursed? You, you reimbursed me. It went over seven bucks. That's a valid point. <laughs> but that is gonna do it, uh, Stephen. Any last final words on Mishra's burnish banner? Yep. I mean, like we always say, uh, we always take your guys' opinions and thoughts into our videos and our content. And moving forward, you know, for the 100s, you can, you know, you won't, you won't see any more infinite combos. I'll just crush your dreams another way. <laughs> but uh, this has been fun. I mean, to be honest with you, I, I, I loved the Mishra deck. Uh, I saw what David did with the Urza 100. I'm excited to see what he's going to do with the $300 Urza upgrade. But at the same time, I think this one is 100% the better commander. Oh, how exciting. Little Mishra, Urza, brother war already between the two of you. But that is going to do it. If you guys like this video, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And as a reminder, if you check the description down below, if you haven't seen Steven's $100 upgrade video, check the description for the link to that video, as well as the deck list for this video as well. Also in the description, you will find links to our Instagram, our Twitter, and our TikTok. That is at guys that magic. Go ahead and follow us on those as well. And until the next video, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace. Goodbye.